and I commend the Trusts Bill to the House. Kia ora. I call Willow Jean Prime. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to think of a waiata or a whakatauki <laughs> or something like that to start my speech off tonight, as has been the custom of my previous speeches. But I struggled to find one. So I thought instead I would um, tell a, little, a, a couple of stories which are absolutely relevant to the legislation that we're talking about tonight. The first is that my law lecturer, too, will be watching this debate with interest. Uh, equity was one of the most difficult subjects uh, for myself when I was studying law at Waikato University. Uh, however, I did get it in the end and I passed very well with good grades. Um, but I couldn't understand why it just had to be so complex. And then when reading the background to this bill, um, perhaps the fact that the law has been the same for 60 years uh, and is quite archaic explains uh, why many law students, I think, struggled with equity uh, when I was at university. The other thing uh, that I wanted to share was a bit of a funny story when I was participating in a moot competition at university, and it's all about um, interpreting law and putting it into your own words and then arguing your case. And after our presentations, the judge said to my colleague and I that her language was too wooden and fuddy-duddy, and mine was the opposite and too casual and relaxed. And what we needed was something in between. And I really struggled uh, when that judge pulled me up on that because I th thought at the time, aren't we supposed to make laws um, so that they can be obeyed by the people, so that they could be understood by the people? And if the language that we use in those laws are so difficult to understand, then how can we expect people um, to understand it and obey it? So I'm really pleased that this bill is looking at modernising um, a, a very old piece of legislation uh, so that the objective um, of these changes, that it will be easier for people to understand and to administer um, the law, will be achieved. My friends in the legal fraternity might not appreciate me uh, saying some of the comments that I do tonight because... Um, of course, there is a whole industry in statutory interpretation and providing advice um, in these areas. But I, like the member who spoke uh, before me from the Labour Party, um, Tamati Coffey, found myself in the situation of being a trustee um, on several trusts before my time here. And it is something that I saw with my own eyes, people who struggle to understand the law that they are required to administer without the help of legal advice. And so any changes that makes it easier for people to understand and to be able to fulfil their duties or for beneficiaries to understand what their rights are, I wholeheartedly support it. So this is a bill to make trust law easier to access and understand. It is the result of the Law Commission review and a 264-page report, and I want to acknowledge and thank the Law Commission for their work. And the Trust Bill will update and replace the Trustees Act 19, the Trustee Act 1956. And as I said, this is the first significant change in the Trust Law um, in over 60 years. Trusts are a big part of our legal system, and the Ministry of Justice says that there are between 300 to 500,000 trusts operating in New Zealand today. So this is a significant piece of legislation that affects a significant number of people. And for an area of law that is so well used, it is time that we refreshed it. The objective of the Trust Bill is to provide better guidance for trustees and beneficiaries and make it easier to resolve disputes. And it does this by providing a number of changes, which I summarise here. A description of the key features of a trust and the duties of trustees. Clear rules about when trustees are required to provide information to beneficiaries so that beneficiaries can enforce the trust. Practical, practical and flexible trustee powers that allows trustees to manage and invest trust property in the most appropriate way. 
and options for removing and appointing trustees without having to go to court in straightforward cases. I wanted to talk um, specifically about Māori land trusts, uh, which are unique to New Zealand and make up a significant proportion of New Zealand's trusts. In fact, in the Law Commission's report, it notes, and this is back in 2013, that there were 9,230 whānau trusts, 5,575 ahu whenua trusts, 33 whenua tōpū trusts, three Putia Trusts and 2,726 Kaitiaki Trusts. Along with the settlement legislation and the trusts created through treaty settlements, this is a significant area of law for Māori. Māori land trusts are unique and make, as I said, are unique and make up a significant proportion of trusts. Unlike express trusts, though, Māori land trusts are generally not settler-made, but are created by order of the Māori Land Court and they are primarily land management structures. They continue in perpetuity and are mostly fixed trusts. It is the intention of this bill that the Māori Land Court and Appellate Court would continue to apply general trust law in a way that reflects that particular context. And the provisions of the trustee bill and, uh, tr and general trust law are applicable to Māori land trusts where Te Ture Whenua Māori Act is silent. Now, at the time that the Law Commission wrote this report, there was also a review of that Act being undertaken. Uh, but with the Honourable Mika Whaiteri here and others, I do not propose to talk about the review of Te Ture Whenua Māori Act tonight. So this is about making trust law accessible. Large numbers of people are finding themselves as trustees or beneficiaries of trusts who may not have been legally trained, and there's confusion amongst many of those trustees as to their role or duties and amongst beneficiaries as to what they can and cannot expect of their trustees. And this leads to problems, problems which I have seen in my own communities. So if settlers and trustees are confused or unclear as to the nature and effect of settling a trust and their obligations, then there's a greater risk of being in, it being improperly administered. And this can also increase the likelihood of disputes and litigation between settlers, trustees and beneficiaries. So with that, I would like to commend the bill to the House um, because it has great objectives. Kilda. Mr Speaker. I call Simeon Brown. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure.